Hello, welcome to um, a Wednesday cracking the cryptic and Olimar heard Simon's story um, yesterday about his, or maybe the day before, about his appalling treatment by American Airlines. Four flights cancelled, um, complete shambles in terms of rebooking, lost luggage, um, still not found luggage as, as of a couple of hours ago. Um, and he sent us a puzzle based on American Airlines' former logo. It's called Apologetic Airlines by Olimar. And frankly, I think it would be perhaps more appropriately apoplectic airlines. Simon is still raging about the fact, as far as I know it, that American Airlines never answer their phone. It just rings for hours or a robot puts you on hold for hours. And I'm afraid they're one of the companies who have just taken customer services to new lows, who can, who think they can get away with almost anything. And uh, it's really appalling. So he can't even get anyone to talk to him so he can find out where his luggage is or how he could get hold of it. It's absolutely shocking. Anyway, um, Oli Ma has prepared this puzzle and is sympathising with Simon over his woes, as we all are, I hope. Um, and I'm going to have a go at it in a moment. It's a brilliant idea, lovely construction, and we'll see how the puzzle works. Um, don't forget that if you love Lion Sudoku, and who doesn't, um, well, you've got a couple of chances. You can get our Lion Sudoku app, one of our many, one of our whole suite of apps from the links under the video, um, and it really is some quality stuff in that. Secondly, you could play um, Skojojo Bo's CTC clone pack which is our patron reward this month and features various lines in it including a line of a type i have not seen before uh, do give that a try it is absolutely fascinating and um, lots of positive comment about that coming in uh, what else have we got going on i mean there's always loads of other stuff on patreon too but there's our merch and sven sudoku pad and just check the links under the video you can find the way to a, the catalog of our puzzles or many other things. And uh, the first link under this video is to this puzzle, Apologetic Airlines by Olimar. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. We'll be trying to place one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Adjacent digits on a green line, these are normal German whisper lines. They differ by at least five. Digits on purple lines form a distinct consecutive a set of, sorry, they form a set of consec consecutive numbers in any order. Um, box borders divide blue lines into segments with equal sums, so those three equal the same as those two, equal the same as those two, and the same as those two. Obviously, the two blue lines could have different standard sums. Black dots indicate digits with a ratio of one to two. White dots, digits with a difference of one, i.e. they're consecutive, and there's a red square indicating the column number of the five in row one. So that's the puzzle. Give it a try. I'm going to start now. Oops, not with that button. With this button, let's get cracking. Um, well, we've got this big green heart in the middle. Oh, but we've also got three black dots down the central column. Right, black dot able, enabled digits do not include five, seven, and nine. So these three digits are five, seven, and nine. I tell you what we've got. We've got total symmetry. The puzzle has total symmetry, and I'm talking about mirror symmetry, left to right. It is total. Am I misreading a line colour or something? See, why I don't think that's right? Ah, oh, OK, no. OK, I was going to... Let's exclude the red cell, which I hadn't thought about. I mean, it looks symmetric, but its job may not be symmetric. OK, why I was puzzled is because if the red cell... Let's put, say we had a 5 in the red cell. 
then there would be at least two solutions to this puzzle, because however it does complete, you could reverse it, you could swap everything through the central axis, and it would still be the same, and they'd all be obeying the same rules. That is very peculiar. I'm not going to use that to say that we don't have a 5 in this cell. Oh, we certainly don't have a 9 in it, because we mustn't put 5 on a black dot. 5 in the top row now appears in one of those two places, and I believe we are going to find that it doesn't appear here, because of this symmetry and uniqueness consideration. But the reason that we don't use uniqueness to solve puzzles is because that way we don't prove that they have a unique solution, and that's part of what we're doing. That's peculiar, though. Anyway, okay, the next thing I was going to do a while ago is alternate cells around the green, because um, the things we know about green lines are they don't have five on, and therefore they alternate between high and low digits, digits higher than five and digits lower than five, and you can't put four and six in places where... Ah, yeah, you can't put four and six in places where their two neighbours can't be the same digit. So there, the two neighbours are there and there. They, if you couldn't put four there, because they'd both be nine, four there would require those to both be nine, four there would require those to both be nine. So these can't contain four or six. That's either a set of one, two, three, or seven, eight, nine. Oh, and also, these two on the green lines are the same polarity, the same high or lowness. Ah, that's great. Okay, these three black dots in the central column, one of them is 3-6. It's from the family of 3-6, which always go together on a black dot. They can't share with anything else. The others are from the family of 1, 2, 4, 8, and therefore one of them contains a 1 and is a 1, 2, and one of them contains an 8 and is 4, 8. I don't know which way around they go yet. But that means one of these is a 1, 2 pair, one of them is a 4, 8 pair, and one of them is a 3, 6 pair. Now, what I'm thinking is that if yellow was high, this would be 8 and 6. And that would take up the 8, 4, and the 3, 6 pairs. This would be a 1, 2 pair. And I don't think that can possibly work. Because what would go in this cell? You couldn't put 1 in that cell. Because, well, it just doesn't work at all. You'd have to put 2 in both of those white dot cells. If you were to put 2 in this cell, you'd need 1 in one of these white dot cells. But you'd already have it here. So this isn't the 1, 2 pair. And therefore, yellow isn't low. No, sorry, yellow isn't high. Yellow is low. That must be right. Purple is high, and I'm going to make it orange to commemorate that. Now, so I've worked out that blue is low, and this is now a one, two, three set, because we couldn't put four in any of those positions. This could be a 1-2 pair, or a 3-6 pair now. This digit is also, it has two neighbours that see each other. It is 1-2 or 3 as well. Ah, so this is also 1-2 or 6, just like that cell. And this is the 4-8 pair. These, well, they're odd. They're either a 3-5 pair or a 7-9 pair. I'm not going to colour them orange for odd, because so far I'm using orange for high. Now, I might change horses in midstream at some point, but I'm not doing it yet. Wow, I mean, this is a complicated puzzle already. And I thought the top row was going to be the most helpful. I haven't really approached that yet. Let's look at this one, two, three pair next. Oh, these are from seven, eight, or nine, because their neighbours see each other. Not so in these cases. They, each of those could be a six with ones at both sides. Oh, I nearly had a really beautiful conclusion. I'm thinking about where these two cells, whatever is in them, where does it go in box, where do they go in box two? 
One of them can go there, but one of them must go here. And now if I was going to put a 1 or a 2 there, that would be very conclusive about these black dot cells. But, let's say one of these was a 3 and the other one was 1 or 2. The one that was 1 or 2 could go here and the 3 could go up here. And that is much, well, I mean, it would be conclusive another way about these cells. So I need to do more thinking. Now, these white dots are selected from 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Which is annoying because it means I can't quite say that these are definitely high cells and therefore these are low. Although it seems quite likely. These, I suppose, are also definitely low because of the white dots to the cells above them. Um, I don't think I can use the blue lines. If that is a 7, actually it probably is a 7 because of the uniqueness thing. It makes that a 5. Ah. Okay, where does 9 go in the top row? This is an interesting question. It doesn't go on a black dot, so it's confined to those cells and not there because of the role of the red cell. So 9 is either in one of these two next to the white dot, or it's in this block, in, blo in box 2. In which case that would be an 8-7 pair. This couldn't be 3. This would be 1-2. That would be 5. 7, 1, 2, 5. 3 would be up here with the 9 and 5. We'd have 3, 5, 9 up here. 3, 5, 9 would be in those cells. This would be a 4, 6 pair. Never mind about... Oh, well, that doesn't work. That's really neat. Okay, that's how it doesn't work. I was going to think about this row, which is complicated. But I'm saying if 9 is in one of these cells, this is an 8, 7 pair. That's a 5. 3, well, 9, 8, 7, 5. Let's say 9 was here. 9, 8, 7, 5 are gone. This pair has to be a 4, 6 by... It's a naked pair by Sudoku in that case, because 9, 8, 7, 5 are gone up here somewhere, and these, these two cells, C are 1, 2, 3, triple. They would be 4 and 6. But 4 and 6 are both even, and so is the 2 in this group of cells, and yet both of these white dots need an even digit. And that would be too many even digits for row 3. So, 9 is not in one of these cells in row 1, it is in one of these cells. I'm going to pencil mark that like this. It's next to an 8 on the white dot. 8 is next to a 4 on the black dot, and therefore one of these bits is 4, 8, 9, and one of these, or, or 984. 984 pointing away from the middle. So 4 has to be in one of these cells now. And now the white dot even digits are definitely 6 and 8. However, on one side, they, they can't be 9 or 8, so they will be using 6. And on the other side, they will be... I don't know if it's definitely 8 and 9, but they'll be using 8. Ah, oh, I mean, this is weird. This is doing my head in already. Um, 9, 8, 4, either there or there. This digit on the 9, 8, 4 side will be 3 or 5. Ooh, the, the high digit on the green line in the box with 9, 8, 4 will be quite low. It'll be 6 or 7, and it'll... Oh, these... These are now low digits, since I figured out where 4 was in row 3. Uh, sorry, they're not low digits. They're 6, 7, 8, or 9. So these are low digits. I should colour them, really, shouldn't I? These are definitely high. 5 in this row could be on the end of it.
Ah, let's look at row four as well. These digits, they almost have to be high. But four is just, well, is four possible? That's quite interesting. No, here's why it's not. That's really interesting. Okay, here's why four can't go in these cells. Because in the box, what box one or three, which has 984 in it, either there or there, that is where this pair is able to be 65. The only way you could have four here is if that's a five and that's a six. And then you're in the box which has 984 in, and the four will clash with the four in the, in the end column. So you can't put four here, because you'll get five, six there, eight will be over here, that'll be 984, and the fours will clash. And you can't put four here, because this will be five, six, and that'll be the 984 side, and the fours will clash. So these digits are not able to be four, or one, two, three, because of the white dot. So they're high as well, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. And that means we've got a quintuple in row five. If I took my gumption in my hands here and marked fives as high digits as well, I don't want to actually, but these are definitely low now. These are the remaining digits from one, two, three, four. Now, now I've had another thought that is really, 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 really interesting. Okay, this, this is beautiful. If Olimar's built this in, this is insane. Right, now I'm gonna prove why this isn't a five. And the answer is gonna come from considering where five goes in both row three and row four. Because if five goes there, it can't be in any of these cells. Now the only places five could then go in row three and row four are here and here, which is in theory absolutely fine because five could be in an X-wing there or there. But in practice, it will not work because one of these white dots has to have an eight on. And you can't get five to connect with an eight in these sequences of white dots on either side. So that is not a five, which we expected to prove, but we didn't expect to prove it in that beautiful way. So this is a seven. There's our first digit in the puzzle. It's the red cell. That's marvellous. That is a marvellous bit of programming, Ollie. So, seven comes out of those cells. They're an eight, nine pairs. That's seven. Its meaning is that five is in the seventh column. So five goes there. This is now not the nine, eight, four side of the puzzle. This is. That digit is three or five. That can't be four. This can't be nine or eight. This can't be nine or eight. These, the white dots here use six as their even digit. So the white dots over here use eight as their even digit. Um, what is this? This is a six now by Sudoku. That's a three. This is a one, two pair. That fixes this black dot as six, three. We got a three in the corner there. I did notice, but I'm too excited about the Sudoku, I'm afraid. So that's a four, five pair. These don't have three in. This is not five anymore. This is a six, seven pair. That can't be three by whisper rules. And, oh, remember, this is a purple line. But also, we do know its order because of the white dots. So this is five or eight now. If the line goes eight, seven, six, that must be a one. That seems to be three or five. That can't be three. Now, we've got a six, seven pair over there. So this becomes a nine, eight pair. And this purple line means that's a seven. And in fact, we then fill in eight and nine. Eight, nine, five, six, three. We need a seven in this box. There it is. And this is one, it's not one, it's two or four. But I don't know which. But look at that progress. Seven comes out of these cells. It also came out of that one. I didn't really notice. This is complicated. These. Not, okay, I was going to say these can still contain a six. 
Much more excitingly, they do now contain a six because they're the only places in row four where there is one, potentially. And that means this digit is a one. And that's a two. Now, that two is going to do something interesting to these purple lines. It's going to say that one is not on them. So one is in one of these positions in row six. And I could wish that was more helpful. These digits can't be a four on their white dot anymore. In fact, one of them is definitely a two, because one of these is definitely a one, and it's the one sitting above the six here. So one of these is a two, and those two are not two. Um, this could still go eight, seven, six, or five, six, seven. I haven't used the blue lines once in this puzzle. Now, does this pair doesn't tell us whether that's a 3-5 pair or a 7-9 pair. Ooh, there's, if that was a 7-9 pair, we've got a lot of very high digits in use up columns 4 and 6. And that, in fact, that, if that was a 7-9 pair, that would be 5, that would be 9, this would be a 6-8 pair. We'd have 8 X-wing, 9 X-wing... Uh, it's possible. It seems less likely, but I haven't considered these blue totals. The interesting thing about the blue lines is there's no one-cell segments on them, so they have a degree of flexibility. Actually, what doesn't have a degree of flexibility is what cells go in here, what digits go in here. We've got to place 3, 4, and 7. And one of those is going to form a pair. Sorry, two of those are going to form a pair on one side or the other. So we've either got a total of 7, 10, or 11. Now, could it be 7? Could we have a 3, 4 pair? I suspect not. No, we couldn't, because a 3, 4 pair on that side or on the other side would create a 5 above it in row 3. And that would only leave this to be a 1-6 pair, which is impossible given the candidates here. You'd have used up 3, 4 and 5 in out of your pairs that could make 7. So, 3 and 4 do not go together. They go separately. One of them goes with 7. And therefore, the, one of these blue lines has an N, a sum, an equal sum of either 10 or 11. Is it worth thinking about that? I don't know. I'll come back to that. I'm just thinking about these purple lines. Because 4 and 5 have to be on them, and 7 and 8 have to be on them. What, what numbers can be missing off them? We know 1 is missing off them, and 2. What other number can be missing off these lines that are consecutive sequences? 9 could be missing, 3 could be missing, or 6, I think. They could be 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9. Or they could be 3, 4, 5, and 6, 7, 8. Or 3, 4, 5, and 7, 8, 9. So I think we're selecting from 1, 3, 6, 9 in those cells, which... Okay, it's not that interesting. I was just experimenting. Okay, we'll come back to these. One of these pairs adds up to 10 or 11. If it was a 3, 7 pair... Then down below, ah, down below, we would have to be using a 9. Because if it's a 3, 7 pair, the N is 10. And you can't use 5 here because it would be two fives. So it would be going 3, 7, 1, 9. This would apply either side. What would happen to the rest of the column? 2, 8, 6. 3, 7, 1, 9, 2, 8, 6. That would not work because this cell would have to be 4 or 5. And if we've used a 9 there, we've already used 4 and 5 in box 8. And that must apply both sides. That's incredible. That's another incredible step. That is as good as that 7 step at the top. Mon monstrously brilliant. I mean, how Ollie has done this puzzle based on that logo, I, I am in awe here.
This, this is not something to be apologetic about. This is incredible. Right, I have ruled out that either of these is a 3-7 pair because, I'm going to go through it again, because that would force a 9 to be used here with a 1 above it. Let's assume it was this side. It equally applies in column 4. But if you did it this side, that 3-7 pair would have a 9-1 pair here. 8, 2 and 6 would be used in the column. And this would have become a 5. 4 and 5 would have been used and this cell couldn't be filled. Incredible. So we don't have a 3-7 pair in one of these. What we do have instead is a 4-7 pair. We've worked out 3 and 4 can't go together. Now we know 3 and 7 can't go together. So the two digits that do go together out of 3, 4, 7 are 4, 7. So on one side, again, let's think it through again. We've got a 4-7 pair. And that becomes a 5. And now this can't be a 7, a 5, or a 3. It can't be a 7 because that's used in 4-7. It can't be a 5 because that'll have appeared in row 3. It can't be a 3 because that would need an 8 as a complement to make 11. And 8 has been used in this box. So it's going to go 4-7 on one side or the other. Then 2 in this cell and 9 in this cell. And now we know 9 is in one of these. And that is an 8, which is not the outcome I expected. That's a 4. This is now a 9-7 pair. And on, okay, let's try and work out what happens on the other side. Well, no, let's first of all think about one side we have 4-7-2-9. So then we have 1-8-5-6 and 3 at the bottom. There must be a 3 at the bottom of that column and a 6 in one of those. Okay, so we know a lot about one side. It's going to be, what, 6 here, 4, 7, 6. Oh, and we know that 9 is in one of those cells. This has become a 5, that's become a 9. That's big, actually. Sorry, I hadn't seen this. That's a 6, 8 pair. This becomes 5. Now we can do this purple line, uh, which has also got uh, white dots on it. Oh, did that just stop there? Because that doesn't resolve that cell. Right, I was, so 7, 4, on the other side, okay, now we know that's a 6, 8 pair. On the other side, which might be this side or it might be that side, we have a 3, 5 pair. So the other N is only 8, which is obviously going with 1, 7 down below. So one of these is a 1 and one of them is a 2. One of these is a 9 and one is a 7. This is now a 3, 6 pair at the bottom. That seems to work. So we've got a 3, 5, 1, 7. Well, much more importantly, we've got an N of 8 on one of these A's. And I can tell you that this group does not add up to 8. Because they can't be 1, 3, 4, or that cell's broken. And they can't be 1, 2, 5, because we've already placed 5 in box, box 4. Actually, we just did it recently, which is great timing. So this group doesn't add up to 8. So the 8 side is over here. This group similarly can't be 1, 3, 4. So it must be 1, 2, 5. That's incredible. That is another incredible step, honestly. This puzzle is mind-blowing. Fact. Right, this is now a 3, 5 pair. That's the 4, 7 pair. I was instancing the wrong side all the time. But doesn't matter. 9 and 2. So this is an 11 sum. 4, 7. Now we can finish off the columns, I think. 5, 8, 1, 6. Oh, ironically, we can finish off the columns apart from the pairs that started them. 8, 9, 2, 4. Look at that. Columns 4 and 6 which threatened to be really difficult, suddenly done. That 6 determines that this is a 1, that makes that a 2, that makes that 1, and that's 2, and this isn't 1, it's part of a 3-4 pair. That's now 2, as it can be. That's 4, that's 1, that's obeying the rule on the 1-9, and I can't resolve those, weirdly. Um, right, now let's nip down here. 
That is a one, so this isn't a one. We pencil marked it as a one because one of these two was a one and we now know where that is, that's here. And this has to add to 11 and it's not allowed to use a one. It does use a two and it doesn't use a five, so it's not two, four, five, it's two, three, six. That's a four, that's a five, that's a three. This could make up, I don't know, let, whoa, this one. Those aren't ones anymore. Oh, that sees a two. Now, that makes that a three. Now I can finish this purple line very straightforward. Seven and six. This must be eight, and that's a nine. Lovely, that row is suddenly completely done. I wonder if I'm gonna finish row five now completely as well, it looks a bit like it, yes. Six and eight, that's a three. Now we're finishing off. I mean, it's an incredible puzzle. There are some steps in this that are absolutely mad. Now, these have to add to eight, so they're a seven, one pair. These have to add to 11. What have we got left? Two and nine, it must be them. And there's a one to go on the bottom. I bet we can just write these columns in now. Five, four, two. Um, this one is three, eight, seven. This one is four, five, six. And this is three, six, nine. And what a marvelous achievement by Ollie Mark. That is incredible. I love that. That's so genius. There are two steps in that puzzle that go beyond things I've seen in a long time. And one is figuring out that that's a seven, which came from fives not being able to go in both those places. That was incredible. And the other was about these pairs. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, nothing to be apologetic about there. What a brilliant saga of a puzzle to go with Simon's saga of his luggage. No, his travel and then his luggage. Um, but anyway, there we go. That is our Sudoku for today. And jolly good it was too. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.